right at right as you were sassing me. That's the time to go live. We're live. Hello, everyone. I always like to check when I first go live that people can actually hear me because I've had so many problems. Because I've had so many problems. Let's not create too many feedback loops tonight. No, but those are awful. I'm happy to be here. I'm joined by my beautiful girlfriend, Yolanda. Hi, guys. Um, we're going to have to try to not touch the table too much because it's quite bouncy, That's unfortunately. hard to do. It's a yeah. table. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think just avoiding the earthquake for our viewers would be ideal. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll see how we do. See how it goes. Why is Yolanda here with me? Well, I do like having her here with me. But, importantly, we're doing a video tonight on whiskey for non-whiskey drinkers. Now, a lot of you who watch my channel regularly are whiskey fans. You know, that's the, the vast majority of the products that I review, vast majority of what I end up drinking personally. Uh, I do try to do other things, but, you know, whiskey is a central part of what I put together. And Yolanda's never been much of a whiskey fan. Um, but she doesn't, it's not an alcohol issue because I know she likes vodka. Mm -hmm. I know there are mixed drinks that you like. Mm -hmm. I know you'll drink wine or beer in certain circumstances. Yeah. So it's really something about whiskey specifically that she's not enjoying. Part of that, I think, is making sure we can understand what flavor she's looking for and how to present those in whiskey. Whiskey is actually a pretty broad set of flavors. The classic flavors people tend to think of are, you know, sweet aromatics, uh, brown sugar, uh, woodiness. Um, if you go into the, the scotch world, maybe some smoky islas. But there's a whole vast other world of flavors. So experimenting in that realm, I'm hoping, will give us a chance to find something that Yolanda actually enjoys. And there's sort of two parts to this. The first part, as I just discussed, is finding whiskey flavors that she'll like. But the second part is also finding presentations of those flavors that she'll enjoy. Because I can't just pour her a Glencairn full of, you know, barrel-proof whiskey and expect her to enjoy it no matter what profile it is. That's not in the wheelhouse where she's been drinking. She doesn't usually drink, uh, like, even just straight liquor. I mean, I, I know you've done shots in the past, but... I do vodka, rocks, lime, which is the most yeah, straight. That's, that's, I mean, that's close. And that's the kind of thing we'll be able to mimic today. Is we've got some ice in front of us right here. Um, we've got some glasses. I don't know if you can see. We've got different glassware. I've got all kinds of little tricks hidden around the table. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. But thank you all for joining me. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything I wanted to say preliminarily. You got anything to say? Did you promote all your socials and your TikTok and all your crazy new fangled influencer <laughs> oh, stuff? Oh, man. That's right. He has a TikTok. Yes, I have a TikTok at underscore the drink pro. That damn the person who took the drink pro. At underscore uh, a lot of things I expect kind of like what we're doing tonight, except in super micro bite sized form. Uh, that is to say, I'm probably not going to do a lot of reviews on there, but I'll be doing a lot of things that are ancillary to drinking, especially with whiskey, but with cocktails and other things as always. Joe Brown said mint julep, and Steve said uh, Yolanda, believe, we believe in you. Yes, yes, I have a TikTok. Hard to believe, but I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> part of my motivation, honestly, for a TikTok is when I was young, when I was first starting drinking, I think a lot of people start before they're 21, but I actually started right around 21. Um, I wanted to try to be, you know, focused on high quality and good flavors, but I had no guidance. You know, I was in college. I was around people that just drank to get drunk. I know that there are young people on those platforms who are wanting to be drinking in a, in a more of an enthusiastic way, in more of a connoisseur style, um, but they just don't have role models. They don't have people to look to to say, oh, yeah, that's how you can drink and, you know, not just go get trashed every night on a handle of, you know, plastic handle of vodka. So that's my motivation for the TikTok. Anyway, I'm also on, yeah, Facebook, you, uh, YouTube, obviously where you're watching me right now. Instagram. Instagram, Twitter. That's where I'm at. Uh, I, oh, I'm also working on a website. TheDrinkPro.com is my domain. I've bought it. I haven't put it up yet, so if you go there, you're not going to see anything yet. But I'm working on getting it designed. I'm going to have a shop there to sell various things. Big plans in the future. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
Are you good now? Oh yeah, now we've done done all my promotions, all the necessary promotions. And you can remember all of them right now instead of you know, I mean, I can kind of remember them. Uh, I'm glad you reminded me. You can see that umbrella. Well, this isn't the backdrop I would have chosen, but that failed miserably. Damn it! Oh fuck! <laughs> We're starting early, guys. He's um, knocking stuff over now. He hasn't even had a drink. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and you got to see my awesome, sexy basketball shorts. I hope this is everything you wanted, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> All right. Yes, Matt, how graceful that is. If there is one word to describe me, it's certainly grace. Um so there's a lot of different elements that go into whiskey tasting that we've talked about in the past. Uh, a lot of them are going to be incorporated here today in different ways. But I want to start first just thinking about how you would do this at home, how anybody else would introduce someone to whiskey that either hasn't had it before or has historically not enjoyed it. There's a couple of questions you could basically ask somebody and get a good baseline of what their history with, is with whiskey. And I'm going to ask Yolanda those. And it'll sort of be a process that you can see, you can explore, and you can mimic to help you figure out what um, whomever you're trying to get to enjoy whiskey would enjoy. So I'm assuming you've tried whiskey in the past. I live with you. Yes. So, yes. But did you ever drink any whiskey before you and I were together? If I was ever given whiskey, it was not my choice. And it was usually when I was, you know, out to just get really drunk when I was a lot younger. Sure. But were you able to drink it without any problems? Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't, um, you were able to still drink it even though it wasn't to be your choice. Yeah. Okay. That's a good start. Um, now have you had any experiences with whiskey that were positive ones where you did enjoy them? Not really. It's just not my flavor profile usually. Okay. So what about the flavor profile do you not enjoy? I prefer cleaner flavors mm -hmm. um, and citrus. Uh, if you think of like seasonal flavors, I'm more of a summer person. So like the citrus, the cool drinks. So no, none of that baking spices or like heavy vanilla or it just feels heavy to me. Okay. How do you feel about like herbal flavors? I like herbal flavors. Okay. See, all of those questions are kind of making me think about different elements of um, specifically whiskeys that I've had in the past where I was like, oh, that's got distinct herbal flavors. That's got distinct citrus notes. You can kind of start connecting these dots um, and figure out what whiskeys do I think would be closer to her profile than your standard whiskey. She's obviously not going to want something like Knob Creek where it's just going to be woodiness. You don't really care for the woodiness either, right? Mm -hmm. The oakiness is no, not your thing. No, no smoke. Oh, yeah, no smoke, but not, not even like, the, like a wood flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're not going to be in the Knob Creek territory. We're not going to be in Buffalo Trace territory. That's going to be too baking spicy. <clears throat> There's going to be a lot of things that are getting sort of eliminated off the list. And, you know, cards on the table, her and I talked about this a little bit beforehand. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, so I've got several boxes and bottles over here. Uh, he has a pile of things. I've got a pile. Uh, but part of what the pile is going to include is things that are you know, profiles she may not have explored in the whiskey world. So I'm looking forward to getting into that. So let's grab something first off. Um, now I know you like this. I do. And everyone is going to hate me for that. Screwball peanut butter whiskey. Now this is not, um, probably not my go-to whiskey. I did a video about not liking it. In fact, making a cocktail with it. But this is not um, some BS nonsense whiskey. This is 35% alcohol. So it's a meaningful proof. We're not talking about 15 or 20%. This is not, you know, curacao. This is much higher. And I didn't even know we refilled my stash. <laughs> she didn't know we had this. And it does have caramel color added. It does have natural flavors added, which almost inevitably includes sugar. So it's going to be a little bit sweeter. It's going to be a little different than your standard whiskey, but it's a good starting place because I think part of the reason you like this is because it is peanut butter, right? 
Um, I think I like it because it's very desserty. And so if you're going to have like an after dinner drink, it's something that I can still feel like I'm getting my sweet because mm-hmm. I'm a sweet fiend. Um, I feel so it's something that I can be drinking on and still getting like my dessert notes. Okay, great. So I'm going to, I'm going to start us off with Basil Hayden, Basil Hayden Caribbean rum. Um, and I'm going to use this as a whiskey for our first experiment, which is about glassware. Um, my assumption is it would be better for her to use an open mouth glass. And we'll talk about that a little bit more after we do this experiment. But um, <clears throat> I think this is a good whiskey for a couple of reasons. First off, you talk about the dessert component. This is a very sweet whiskey. It's Caribbean rum finished. And you always, a big part of all of this is being attentive to what the person you're with is looking for. She's looking for sweeter flavors. She's not looking for vanilla. She's not looking for baking spice. She's not looking for woodiness. To me, this is going to avoid a lot of those downfalls. This is going to be sweeter. It's going to have more wine-like qualities. It's going to have rum-like qualities. So this should avoid a lot of those downfalls. Now, the one possible pitfall here, which there is one possible pitfall here. I won't say it because I don't want to prime her. That's another thing. If you tell somebody you're going to taste apples, they're a lot more likely to taste apples. So there's one flavor in here she may not like. And we'll see if she pulls it out. We'll see if she mentions it. She might not like it for a different reason. And then you learn something else. We are having an unstable connection. Gotta love YouTube. YouTube loves me and and all technology in fact works perfectly when I use it. Just kidding, it always screws up somehow. And we're back, hopefully you saw everything. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so we're going to dig in with The only this. thing you missed was him bitching about technology. <clears throat> you missed it at all. That's part of why they're here, I'm sure. Watching you fail? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yes. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's go into Basil Hayden. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll show you all. I'm going to pour this into, obviously, a drink pro, Glenn Karen. Five years now, not a lot left. Now, this is a glass that I believe I borrowed permanently from a restaurant at some point in my life. Uh, (laughs) And then I made us keep it. And then she made us keep it because she likes it and thinks it's cute. And I know you've drank multiple times that peanut butter whiskey out of Mm -hmm. this. The screwball has often come from this glass. So we'll give it a shot with a different kind of whiskey. This glass, um, I'm sort of using this as an experiment. I like this glass for specifically for rise, but you can use it for anything. But because of this sort of, you know, um, rounded, uh, but, but still targeted shape, you get some of the effects of a Glencairn, but it might be a little bit less extreme. So I think that's going to be helpful. Steve called it. Steve called the Basil Hayden. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a great whiskey for this kind of project. And then finally, yeah. just a very, very classic rocks glass. <clears throat> I apologize for the coughing. My throat's been bothering me this evening. I think it's because of something I ate. Anyway, so I'm just going to pour a little bit in each glass, and we'll see what she smells, and uh, if she likes any of the smells, if she doesn't like any of the smells, and then we'll go through a tasting. Glad to hear everybody seems to be doing okay. All right. We're just going little pours, because I'm not putting this stuff back in the bottle, and if I drink everything she doesn't drink, it's going to be a mess. Hey, we got some Linda says all bueno on this end. Katie says Yolanda. My plant girls are here. Ah, uh, the plant gals are in the house. Shout out to the plant gals. All right. Yes. You got to put the. There you go. Put mm-hmm. it back. No, no. Uh, uh. This is just. I just like it. (laughs) The chat's going to be fun tonight. I can already tell. Which last am I starting with? Well, um, good question. I think it makes the most sense to start here. I think we work from, I'm going to move this ice, which will certainly come into play later. We're starting rocks last. Yeah. Start with rocks. Go big, go least to most targeted. Okay. Okay. 
Katie said, get drunk and buy plants. Um, I, I mean, one that. of those things is probably going to happen. She's probably going to buy it plants. It smells buttery. What's up, Nate? It smells buttery. Oh, you tasted it. Oh, okay. Jumped the gun a little. That's you fine. You gave me no instructions. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just do smells and then taste then. Uh, okay. So what do you think about the taste? It tastes burnt. Okay. Now I think, okay. That's good <laughs> to know. Is it, do you taste anything else? There's definitely a woody taste in there that I don't like. That was the taste I was going to say. I didn't want to prime you with the wood taste, but I know there's some it's woodiness in this. very woody. Yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the only Basil Hayden that I have is the Caribbean rum cask, which means it's been extra aged, so it's going to be woodier. But the Caribbean rum, I felt, was important because it adds a sweetness. It adds a dessert-like quality at the beginning of the palate, which I don't get that much of that from the Basil Hayden, but... This is a good learning moment. You know, you've got to think about the palate of the person you're trying to bring on this journey with you, not your own palate. My palate do not like Basil Hayden and not necessarily because it's too sweet. I don't like the profile of it, but it's not about my profile. It's about her profile. We're going to see a lot more of another example of that in the near future. Um, but don't want to get ahead of myself too much, but there is some whiskey out here that is definitely not stuff I like, but I think she might like it because of some of the products that are in it, some of the flavors rather that are in it. Um, Here you go. Yeah, thank you. So go ahead and try the rounded glass there. This one doesn't taste as, as wood forward. Okay, that's good to know. Katie's going to have a spiked seltzer because she's basic and doesn't have whiskey. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you like the glasses too, Katie. I'll tell you, you know, the spiked seltzer thing is kind of interesting because um, that's also going to come up before the end of the stream is uh, seltzer and its possible uses in this process. This just tastes generic to me. That's not a bad thing because that's kind of what it's supposed to taste like. It's supposed to be just generic, sweet, very... It's not that sweet. Well, can, okay, generic in what way? What kind of notes do you get? I, don't, I won't put words in your mouth. I don't, I, I don't really have any notes, I guess. It kind of just tastes like alcohol. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I do get that burnt note you were talking about in this glass. G. Okay. Carey said, I'm definitely interested in glasses, which are the best. Case I'm never drinking anymore. <laughs> Nate said, I may have missed this answer, but my wife doesn't like whiskey much at all. What? I can't read, apparently. Oh, yeah, that's a good start to the night. <laughs> Would you cut things with water a good bit to start? So I think you're jumping the gun. Who? Nate. Because you were talking about yeah, I, yeah. ice. I think I think it depends on what the what the issue is. You know, one of the things I pointed out very early on was. With Yolanda, I knew she liked alcohol. I mean, the, the martinis she makes are almost straight vodka. She'll put vodka on ice. She likes very dry martinis. And she'll put vodka on ice with a little bit of lime. So the alcohol is not the issue with Yolanda. And so I'm not worried about cutting this with water. Cutting things with water can be helpful to dilute specific flavors. Um, but I usually go to water specifically as a reduction of burn. And that's not really what she needs here. Um, I will actually be using some ice and some water for some of the higher proof whiskeys that I have that I want to cut to get the proof down because she isn't used to drinking 50 or 60%. She's used to drinking 40%. So I'll get the proof down to a comfortable level for her, but also kind of play with the flavors a little. Um, I think that if, if you're talking about somebody who doesn't like drinking at all or just likes drinking cocktails, I think you stay in that world. You, you say, all right, well, we'll, we'll you know, cut it a lot if she's not used to drinking at all. Or if she likes cocktails, you'll put the whiskey in a cocktail, which is also something I'm going to do tonight. We got a lot of fun stuff ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. So, have you tried this one? No. All right. I've been waiting on you. Oh, well, that's a mistake. You're bad at instructions. Now, I like that one better. 
What do you think? It seemed like you did. Yeah. That one, it completely cut out the wood. Like, I got no wood in that glass. Yeah. Yes. Or the burnt. There was a smell that I couldn't identify that was bake-like, baking-like, but I don't know. There's a vanilla extract kind of vibe. It didn't smell like vanilla to me. <clears throat> yeah, if she doesn't like the burn, Nate, water may be helpful, but honestly, I would go to ice first um, because the cooling down can help mellow out a lot of the notes uh, that are problematic. And, you know, whereas somebody who likes whiskey but prefers it cooler may go with a big round sphere or a big cube, I would actually go with a series of smaller cubes like you're going to put into a shaker for a cocktail. Um, that's going to give you some very purified flavor notes. But it's also important to remember, again, like what flavors are, she, you know, what flavors are she, man, words are just not with me today. What flavors but is. What flavors do does she prefer? Bad. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and try Are number three. Are you sure you didn't drink before this? I'm sure. This smells very vanilla-y. Maybe even a little pineapple? You didn't watch this last, did you? I mean, it was in the cabinet. There's dirt in the bottom of it from what? when I used it from plants, probably. <laughs> It, I mean, is I'm, that a deal breaker? No, I'll still do right. it. But there's definitely soil. Well, if it's your favorite, we'll wash it properly and then we'll just get back to it. It's going great, guys. How you doing? Tell me how you're doing. Ew. No. It's not just the dirt? It's not just the dirt. It tastes like I'm sucking on a chimney. Yeah, now see... I would say from a whiskey drinker perspective, this is probably the best one because it's going to have the most classic whiskey flavors. It's got that vanilla shows up. It's got that woodiness shows up, but that's not what she's looking for. Again, know your audience. So. It smells very. Last but not least, the Glen Cairn glass. This never goes well for me. It, she's not going to like it, but I want to do it for science. <clears throat> I'm a squirmy fella. I don't do well in live streams where I'm sitting. I, that's why I always stand usually is I can squirm a lot more when I'm standing. You just squirm constantly anyway. I don't really smell much of anything. Katie wants us to do an episode where um, you could do one on if each whiskey was a plant, what plant it would be. Most of them are going to be corn, Katie, or barley. I think she means like this. It <clears throat> like it's spirit plant? <laughs> yeah. It's spirit plant, still corn and barley. I hate to break it to you, Katie. Well, so I don't like this one. Mm -hmm. And I would probably give it a plant assignment where I... Poison ivy? Don't. Yeah, probably. I'm very allergic to poison ivy. Interestingly, I actually prefer this particular whiskey out of... Um, a lot of favorite, our uh, second hand sticky finger special glass. Yeah, Matt's a great question, Matt. What's everybody drinking tonight? Let's hear it. Let me know. Okay. Well, well, which one do you think was your favorite of the four? I think I know. Yeah. Which is which is fun because I uh, didn't expect this. Honestly, I kind of expected the open mouth one to be your favorite, but. After trying along with her, I totally understand why. This glass opens up some of the, um, first off, it quiets down some of that woody element, but it also opens up some of the other, um, I don't want to say neutral grain flavors, but the more, uh, the less uh, it whiskey cancels flavors. Out, yeah, it cancels out the whiskey flavors. Yeah, it cancels out some of the whiskey flavors that are unpleasant for people. It just kind of tastes like ethanol. <laughs> Oh so Kay said, based on personality and such, Serenity said, out of the glasses, which is best to worst. If I had to guess, best to worst for Yolanda was this glass. Number two was probably this glass. No, you didn't like that one. Number two is probably this glass. I don't know. Let me compare those two. Okay. Joe. Oh, man. Joe, give her some Granny's Batch. Everyone likes peanut brittle. Yeah, I think this one's probably number two. That's number two. And then the open mouth totally is number three. Probably. All right. <laughs> Steve's in timeout. That's funny. Sorry, Steve. 
Um, Matt's got the 1792 foolproof big red liquor store pit. Tasty stuff. Now, I want to take just a little detour because I love that. I've got too much stuff on this table. Mm -hmm. Oh, that. It works. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> There's a tray of plants that he moved to the corner, and when he did that, Joe, you they called got it, my man. Very close to the edge. Joe absolutely called it. This is right in that wheelhouse of flavors. So we've got a glass. We got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and use both of these glasses. Um, I've got a little spit cup here that we're gonna make. I'm actually not gonna put this one in because it's got dirt in it. Let's go ahead and rinse these out a bit. Too many things all happening at once. Can you swirl that around for me? A little dirt never hurt anyone. Doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. Okay. So. We've got her down to two glasses. Good starting place. Still got a little water in it. Let's go ahead and go into the flavor aspect of things. Katie asked how many different whiskeys I have. Um, more than I care to admit. Katie, we don't talk about it because then he asks how many plants I have. And I actually don't know the answer to that question. I Are think you, Nate just answered the question perfectly in the chat. The answer is always not enough. So um, this kind of goes into the next realm of flavors. I know he has them hidden all over the house. Um, but I guess no technically comment. my plants are too. <laughs> I'm going to say I, bought, I brought this out mainly because Joe freaking called it. He even called the right batch, which I love. So... Big shout out Joe Brown on that one. He knew what I was going to bring out. We're going to try. But before I go into that, I'm going to go with something a little bit lower proof that's way out of left field because this is super high proof. This is 63.2% alcohol. And that's going to go into a different strategy that I have for making things palatable for someone who's not used to the whiskey experience that I don't want to quite get into yet. Um, I want to stick with the flavors for just one more experiment because we've got the glass picked out. So now we're just going to do a straight up experimental flavor. This is High West Silver. Silver whiskey, it's Western oat whiskey. This is a whiskey made 100% from oats. It is weird, but... Part of being weird means it's going to be outside of the standard flavor profile. And we're going to learn something about what she does and doesn't like based on giving this one a try. Which last would you like me to try first? Uh, why don't you try the one you like you like better? Try that one first. Oh, goodness. Not a fan, huh? It smells really weird. We'll talk about it. In what way does it smell weird? It kind of smells like fermented pears, but mm -hmm. not in a good way. <laughs> well, you get that fruity note for sure. Katie wants you to use the empty bottles as planters. I have some of those. Most of them are too skinny, but he has a coffee that was aged in barrel cask. It was Victor's coffee. Yeah, it was aged in bourbon barrels. And I have that. It's on my plant shelf. I'll take a picture tomorrow for you. Um, it reminds me of my childhood, which is a little weird to say. I think it smells kind of like um, fruit leather. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Okay. It smells to me like fruit leather. Cool. And real leather, <laughs> which is a weird combination. It's good notes. We're in a good place here. Maybe a little bit of Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, there's a little. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's new make that's been watered down, so you're gonna get a little bit of that shoe polish ethanol note. This is not gonna be a whiskey you love, but it's gonna give us some really good information about your flavor profile. It smells very 
strong of alcohol. Well, why don't you give it a taste and let's let's find out. It has a very pear note. Mm -hmm. And something else. It's kind of spicy. It's is it hotter than what we were just drinking? No, it's the same proof. It feels hotter. <clears throat> yeah, I think part of that's because it is new make that's just been watered down, so it hasn't had any time to take uh, take on some of the oak in a barrel. And although that brings in the oak flavor, you don't like it does calm down a lot of the elements that you, uh, that, you that no one's gonna like from a from a liquor. It would make a good pear cocktail, but I don't really like it standalone. All right, why don't you try it out of this glass and just confirm that. Joe asks, have you ever tried Wolcott? It's a good starter bourbon at 90 proof. I have not tried Wolcott, Joe. This one cuts out that shoe polish smell. Carrie said, can you describe how they task as far as like strength burn and our aftertaste? I, I'm not understanding that. Strength burn. How they task. Can you describe how they task? Do you mean how they taste? Probably. Okay. Mike says, hey, Kyle, dug into some Old Tub Friday. I actually really liked it. Glad to hear, man. Uh, Old Tub's been getting a lot of positive it, reviews. It still smells like pears, um, but less chemically, whereas in that glass it smelled more um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, processed. So it smelled more chemically. Um, This one tastes more alcoholic. Yeah. Like it, it, I taste more ethanol, but it's not as burn. Like there was more burn with that glass and less with this. Interesting. Okay. Do you still think you prefer this glass with this pour? <clears throat> with this pour? Yeah, with this pour. No, I prefer this glass. Okay. See? Okay. So we got some good information there. So what kind of flavors did you get out of this? You said you got that pear flavor and you could it taste very, the alcohol alcohol. On it was it. very pear forward. Okay. Did you like the flavor generally? What elements did you not like about it? The alcohol flavor, I assume. I th yeah. The alcohol flavor. And then it had like a weird back back taste. Like the the end of it is just not overall pleasant. <laughs> Would you describe it as sour, bitter? Bitter. Okay. I think that goes back to the, it feels like fermented pears, but not in a good way. Like, mm -hmm. Okay. So we've gotten some good information out of those two pours. <clears throat> Let's see, what did Mike say? Wonder if you'd like Wathens. I think its smoothness would be great for a non-bourbon fan. I I do have a Wathens. I don't think it's open. I don't really know where it is either. <laughs> so that may come up. It may not. But uh, yeah, that's worth that's worth considering. I think what we'll do now, um, Katie, that that answers your question. He doesn't know how many bottles of whiskey he owns. I think what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna break out the jigger. This is basically just so I can figure out. Um, yeah, it does finish better than St. Cloud, Joe. I'm going to use this jigger to essentially water down this whiskey because this is incredibly high proof, especially for somebody who's not used to drinking high proof whiskey. This is Booker's Granny's Batch, which we already uh, broke out. I broke out a glass of it because Joe called me on it right away, which very impressive knew where we were going with this experiment. But um, adding water to whiskey is frowned upon by a lot of like um, snobs, basically. But in Scotland, it's pretty par for the course. Adding water to whiskey is sort of the de facto move. Uh, and Scotland's not the only one that feels that way. So, <clears throat> you know, the uh, don't let somebody who's a you know, thinks there's a right or wrong way to drink whiskey, tell you how to drink whiskey. Looks like old 55s. Oh, shit. I'm making a mess. 
Nate's breaking open the uh, old 55 <laughs> single barrel store. Why don't store you get pick. a towel when you have to refill the water? I'll just wipe my, and, and we're fine. Just wipe my pants with it. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use this so that I don't make such a mess when I stir. Um, there we go. So I did one part bookers and one part water. And the reason I did that was this pour is normally at 63.2%. So cutting it down by half makes it 31.6%. So this is a lot lower. This is lower proof than anything else we've tried thus far using water to kind of cool it down a little bit. So why don't you go ahead and give those a, a smell and a taste. Do you have a preference as to which last Do them in whatever order you'd like. It smells like you're sitting next to a campfire. Hmm. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. Um, you said peanut brittle, brittle earlier, but I don't get peanut brittle. Okay. What do you get? Um, maybe like a toffee. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's still like caramely, but. <clears throat> yeah, that, that caramel toffee sweetness is definitely in there. Do you get any nuttiness at all? maybe a hint, but it's not at the same time. So it's more towards yeah. the back. Yeah. So to me, that doesn't read peanut brittle because mm -hmm. you get those at the same time. Yeah. Um, it's not horrible. Like I would probably drink it if it was handed <laughs> it to me. That is a raving, raving <laughs> positive review. It's not horrible. <laughs> yeah, Nate's right. Toffee makes sense with the watering down. Why don't you try it in that glass and see if you like it better out of that glass or this glass? This smells better. You like it to smell better, that one? Okay. This smells more um, buttery and like you're walking into like a pastry shop. That's a promising note. The taste is almost completely gone. So what does it taste like? watered down whiskey. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> taste Just, it. It's... Yeah, I will. I will taste them. Like it smells way better out of that last bit. It does just taste like water. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't have any notes for that. Last. But you liked it okay out of this one. Liked it. If you were, if you, if you, if it was sitting on a table for free, would you take a glass of it? I think it would depend on my plans for the day. If you were possibly, at, if you were at some sort of party and they were giving, yes. them, yeah, okay. Pretty dewy. So this one tasted like watered down whiskey. Have her smell your glass with no water. That's what I just did. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what <laughs> you're doing. So they were diluted the same degree in a different glass. That's correct, Katie. Now, this one is undiluted. So this is at full strength. But because it tastes like watered-down whiskey in this glass, I'm optimistic that she might like it more. Now I smell apples. It's a good note. I got apples out of this as well. And raisins? Mm-hmm. There's some dark fruit in here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Too much? Very burny. Yeah. That's all I get. You just get burned. Take two more sips of it. Give it three little sips. Um, I hate this rule. I, I know. I know you hate this rule. I knew this wouldn't be your favorite episode. <laughs> no, it's not. It's my. It was my idea, which is the worst. It was her idea. You heard it here first. All right. Third time to jump. Uh, Katie says, send us samples. We can make something happen, Katie. <laughs> Next plant box. <laughs> yeah, we might get a one or two in there for you. 
Uh, kind of tastes like apple crisp, maybe. Well, it's not a bad note. Right? Mm -mm. It's still a little burnt. Okay. Thank now, you. just let that sit for a few minutes. Okay. Can I have water in between? Absolutely. I recommend it. So the idea with the ice, which is a little bit different than the water, the watered down version, you're just changing the content essentially. You're just adding water. The ice, changing the temperature also will change the flavor profile. And so I'm curious to see, it will certainly reduce the burn, but it may also make the flavor something um, more enjoyable because it won't be as low proof as the half water, half bourbon. Uh, and have some character without being so burn focused. So that's my hope out of the ice cube. And because these are small ice cubes, they should melt relatively quickly. I'll give it maybe a minute. But that's where we're going with that at the very least, so you know. Serena said, what's the difference with the shape too? You mean the shape of the glasses? Oh, I think she missed that at the beginning. Yeah, with, when we did them with the, uh, the same whiskey in, in, in each of these glasses, and I think she so preferred it. There's an experiment we do with almost every like couple that we meet in the whiskey world where in a rocks glass versus a Glencairn, do you want to explain the science behind it? Yeah. So, um, well, Serene said, no, the ice. Yeah. So the different shapes of ice, I mean, essentially I'm using just regular freezer ice, which is often like frowned upon by whiskey nerds. But um, I think a open. big... Yeah, well, yeah, we do. But we have, I mean, I have, uh, you know, molds for big cubes and big spheres. I'm not using those because essentially those are really to cool down the drink but keep the same proof level. And I wanted to actually change both a little bit for her. Um, so having different shapes of ice essentially just affects the change in the whiskey um, based on both temperature and dilution. So you can adjust each of those levels. So if you did little tiny, like, chewable ice like you get out of, a fountain, uh, a, you know, a soda fountain at a gas station. Pebble ice. Pebble ice. That's going to adjust the temperature, but also radically increase the water content, more so than something like this. Why don't you go ahead and give that one a try? Cool. The beginning tastes like apple pie. Not a bad note. Then it gets bitter. Then it gets bitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Not a good start. It's really burny, but it. You get that bitterness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is relatively it's old it's whiskey. Yeah. This is relatively old whiskey. It's going to be kind of woody. It's going to be kind of bitter. That's a hard thing to overcome with this kind of product. But it's mm -hmm. good that you're getting that kind of enjoyable early, early doors because a lot of the hard part to me is getting that part good. Getting the finish good is actually rather relatively easy. But well, getting the start good. The is start hard. is good. Yeah. So that's a good sign. So we're making progress. I, you know, at some point I'm going to open up some new whiskey just because I can, because I want to. Uh, <laughs> I brought 11 bottles of whiskey over here. <laughs> and I wanted to try something different just for kicks. I guess I'm mm. not going to be productive after the CMI. No. Not <laughs> You're going to do what I usually do, which is eat something and go to bed. Woohoo. Uh, yeah, so the Katie, the shape of the glass in the beginning. I'll just give you a quick and dirty version. We tasted a couple of different glasses, um, ones that I thought might be more likely for her to enjoy. Um, part of the science that we were talking about before is women tend to have a higher sensitivity to ethanol. So if you give a woman a glass of alcohol, she'll smell the alcohol more strongly and perceive it from further away than a man would. Um, and so typically men will often use these kinds of um, sort of targeted glasses to shoot the, the scent up into your nose. Whereas women will tend to find more notes when they can avoid that ethanol. So uh, if, if just random person off the street, if they're a man, they're typically gonna prefer this kind of glass in terms of getting more flavor. And a woman will tend to prefer this glass, not because they want it weaker, but because they're more sensitive to the ethanol. So they can pick out the flavor notes the man's getting in this one, but they have a hard time doing it in this one. They have to use this one to get there. It's because the wideness disperses the ethanol. Right, this glass is actually designed to sort of create this torpedo, shoot the, the, uh, the, uh, the notes right into your nose. 
And, you know, that is a generalization. So take it with a grain of salt. Any generalization can be. <sighs> it's a fun experiment, though. Yeah, it is a fun experiment. It, it generally speaking, is, is going to prove pretty successful. We've only had one person violate that that generalization of men tend to prefer Glenn Cairns, women tend mm -hmm. to prefer open mouth glasses. So, yeah. And we probably we've done several, several couples, at least we've done with experiments mm -hmm. with this. So. And one time we were doing it on me and we probably went through like five and there was one towards the end that I was, I actually handed it back to Glenn Karen and I said, I don't like this, take it away. And he was just like, it's the same thing. It was the exact same whiskey. All right. Well, <laughs> if I do what I'm supposed to do, oh, if I do what I, what I'm intending, it, which is essentially find something she will like to drink. I would go down the path of continuing to modify this particular pour because um, we've got a profile she really likes and we're just talking about fixing that finish. But I think before we go down that, I want to kind of detour and go into a different whiskey. I want to explore some other profiles and see if she likes those or not. So let's go ahead and uh, go on to the next location and experiments. Um, That's why I said you need to do, oh, this is not going to go well. That was more graceful than your beginning of this video. Well, as I continue to drink, my grace only increases. What did Katie say? That's so interesting. I would have thought the more narrow glass would hold it in better since the wider part is down further. I get how it targets the nose closer up. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's not what you'd expect. It's kind of fun. You wanna drink the water out of that one? You're gonna need it. Most of the soil's gone. <laughs> All right. All right. 11 bottles, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I got 11 I, I bottles. I did not sign up for 11 bottles. <laughs> yep, that's what we think about Grace. Let's try some mellow corn, huh? Oh, man. Yeah, we got that mellow corn. <laughs> oh, no. Now... Part of the reason I'm breaking out the mellow corn is what was her complaint on the bookers, the finish. If you remember my video, if you haven't watched it, you can check it out after the live stream. I did a video with mellow corn. My only real complaint about the mellow corn was it had no finish. It has no finish. So if she likes the palate and didn't like that finish, this might be a good option. Now, this is at 100 proof, so I'm going to calm it down a wee bit. Probably with an ice cube that seemed to work pretty well last time. Whoa. Comes out fast, that mellow corn. Katie has a great question. Do you ever mix whiskeys or is that a no-no? Absolutely yes, you can mix whiskeys. I'm a big fan of mixing whiskeys. Infinity bottles. That's right. See, she gets it. You want to tell them what an infinity bottle is? Um, well, there are a couple ways of doing it. Uh, you can use mix like specific ratios of whiskeys that you have into one bottle and see what you end up with. Or what a lot of people do is if they get very near to the bottom of a particular bottle, they will empty it into their infinity bottle. And so as time goes on and they drink little bits of their infinity bottle, the tastes and flavors change. It's kind of a fun way to experiment with how things fit together, how tastes change. You can find some really interesting flavor profiles. In fact, Katie, one of the most popular uh, mixed processes that you'll ever see is called Poor Man's Pappy. Now, Pappy Van Winkle is one of the rarest, most expensive whiskeys on the planet. Um, so people can't get it and they can't afford it. Well, what you can do is mix Weller 12 Year with Weller Antique, two relatively available whiskeys, relatively. Um, and get something that's very close approximation to the Pappy Van Winkle. So mixing whiskeys is a time-honored, celebrated tradition. You ready for some mellow corn? No. 
all I have in my head is your Im imitation of Southern Indiana. Get that mellow corn. All right, let's do it. Nothing to it but to do it, baby. It's burning still. It's burning still, but it's cheap. It's ten dollars. It ain't going to be, this is $80 whiskey. It ain't going to be $80 whiskey. It's going to be $10 whiskey. And it smells like nothing. You got to slide into that Southern accent when you're drinking mellow corn. It's it just part like of it. It smells like nothing. That's what it's supposed to smell like. Nothing. Tastes like corn, looks like corn. It doesn't smells taste like, like corn, though. It's because I put ice in it. No, thank you. So give me some, let's talk about it. What, what, what do you- There's like a very sweet taste at the beginning and the rest is just like fire. Really? Interesting, okay. I mean, I can try it again if you don't believe me. No, I believe you. So let's let that one bake a little longer. Okay. Um, given that note, we'll water it down further. All right, mellow corn. Serenity said, I help one of the 11 in the mixed is the mixed whiskey bottle of yours. It is not everything about that she would hate. It's Although, true. that's a really good idea though, Serena, because what I could do is make a blend, make my own second infinity bottle. I've got two bottles for it. And the second infinity bottle could be trying to make a whiskey I think she would like. That could be a fun experiment. We we might that we might we might have to get into that. Well, it smells sweeter. So there's that. That's good. That one. It only kind of tastes sweet. There's not a lot of flavor. Is it? It's not as burny, but it also doesn't stick around. So compare that to the the bookers where I asked if you'd drink it at a party if it was sitting out for free. Would you, if you had th both of those, would you pick this one or the, that bookers? Yeah. Probably this one. All right. See, that's good good information. So it's it's pretty pretty boring though, would you say? Yes. It's just kind of sweet and then. But it's drinkable. Yeah. If I had to. Yeah. You had to. There's going to be a lot of that. I don't think you're going to succeed at this. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really just pushing that boulder up the hill forever right now. <laughs> damn it. If you don't try, you have to imagine Sisyphus happy. He's got to try to keep pushing that boulder. Hopefully somebody gets that re reference. Shout out to my absurdist philosophers in the crowd. Okay. What was I doing? Uh, live streaming. Yeah. Yeah, we are live, aren't we? I mean, there's a bunch of people over there chatting away. Yeah, they're, they're talking. Well, they're, yeah. They were talking. Well, so whatever step you need to take to continue this roller coaster that is this live stream. Just, just gonna, just gonna fall off quietly. Let you figure out how to deal with these people. <laughs> oh hell yeah, Joe! Joe's totally right. Good thing about plants is that they're cheaper. Although I will tell you, Joe, you'd be surprised how expensive plants can get. If I've learned anything from Yolanda and the plant world, it's that there are a lot of varieties. There are a lot of um, people with more money than cents. Which I think I already knew that from the whiskey world, but like it just confirmed it. They're like it's not just whiskey heads. It's there's a lot of areas, um, but as a general rule, yes. I mean, you're not going to run out um, to Lowe's and spend three hundred dollars on plants as easily as you could do that with whiskey. I mean, I could do it. It would be harder though. With my collection, yes. With if someone was just starting out, it wouldn't be that. Oh hard. fuck yeah! If you but just I starting have, out, just start. I have all, all the basics that I want. And either have given away the basics that I don't want or killed them. <laughs> All right, putting that. Or just let them die. Put that in the mellow corn in the good pile. No one should ever put mellow corn in the good mellow pile. Corn. Mellow, mellow corn. <laughs> mellow corn. 
Mellow Porn is not Mellow Corn. Those are different products. <laughs> Probably the same market, but different products. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, we're only an hour into this thing. Of the bottles you have here, what is the better value with a good taste, in your opinion? Because I know Yolanda isn't really a whiskey drinker. <sighs> what is the better value with a good taste? I mean, honestly, that mellow corn is a real is a this is a this is a ten dollar bottle. It's a ten dollar bottle, and it's fifty percent alcohol. This is what's called bottle and bond. I won't go too far into it, but bottle and bond means it's made by the same. Okay, I'm going to go too far into it. Bottle and bond means it's from one distiller, one growing season, um, and and all of it is going to be at least four years old aging, and it's going to be 50% alcohol. So you know it's getting a very good pure product. It's not getting mixed with anything, and it's a higher percentage than most liquor off the shelves. Yeah, it is. It's definitely cheap. But the really good thing about this to me is the 50% alcohol because if you are somebody who likes putting whiskey on ice, this is great. This is something that really gives you a chance to cool things down, mix it into cocktails without losing proof to the point where it's just water. This holds up to a lot of stuff. Like this thing she was saying, taste water down, it's still probably 30 to 40% alcohol. Well, to catch up with you. Oh. <laughs> Katie's hungry and sleepy. Well. You can go to bed, Katie. You don't have to stay around if you don't want it. Yeah, Katie. You don't have to sit here and support Yolanda. You can just leave. That's fine, I guess. Hey, she told me earlier she might not even show up. <laughs> so, I mean, she made Katie, it. do whatever you want, girl. <laughs> just do whatever you want. <laughs> She made it through an hour of you. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And I live with you. All right. Now we're going, we're going some places now. We're getting serious. All right. So this here <clears throat> is the highest proof whiskey in my collection. Oh dear. Tell them what the proof is on that. What's the percentage on that? 76.97%. 76.97%. It's almost 70% alcohol. It's 153 proof. <laughs> yeah. Nate said, do you have any finished bourbons for her? Um, the Caribbean rum finished Basil Hayden was actually one of the first things on my list. So yeah, I do actually. Um, I, I, get, I think that's the only one I've got that's finished. Yeah, that's the only finished Either. one I've got. Um, I think... I'm trying to avoid some of the finished ones right now, Nate, because a lot of the finishing brings in extra woodiness. And I know that's something she really doesn't want from the whiskey. Um, although, you know, finishing is really good because it mellows things out and it adds sweetness. But it seems like based on what we've done so far, the thing she's really sensitive to is that woody oakiness at the end. Matt said, so my fiance Lillian is a huge plant geek slash collector as well. And she is curious what Yolanda's favorite plant in her collection is. Oh, man. Matt, we're going to have to have them have a chat because... Uh, right now, it's probably my Hoya Linearis. Hoya Linearis. There you go. Do you know which one that is? Nope. I've talked about it so much. I, 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 names are hard. What's the one that you apologize for because you thought you broke it? Oh, that super long one? Yes, that super long one. Yeah. Now this stuff, yeah, it's 77, almost 70, yeah, almost 77% alcohol, but it's actually incredibly mild. <clears throat> this is what's called a light whiskey. Now it's a rye whiskey, which I think she'll like some of the grain notes. I don't think that will bother her. It's not going to have the oaky notes because um, it's a light whiskey. It just, it doesn't stick around. Are you yawning? Mm -mm. Just sighing. That's fine. Sighing's fine. But yawning's not. Well, I know you're not going to be happy, but if you have to be unhappy, don't be bored. <laughs> I was yawning. I want to make it excitedly unhappy. <laughs> I was yawning. Yeah, I know. 
Yeah, Nate wants that bell meat cast strength. We can do that for you, Nate. Um, let me do this first, and then I'll grab that for you. We can run that. Wait, that's the one that got here like two weekends ago, right? Mm -hmm. Here's my stir. Okay. We just decided that that's my glass. It seems to be the one you keep going back to. Okay. We can just pour this into the other glass as needed, but now, why do I think she'll like this one? First off, I've proofed it down. It's still going to be about forty percent alcohol after what I've done to it, but it's going to be a rye grain. So I'm curious how she responds to that. Um, that's essentially it. Just fun. Just screwing around. Smells weird. It smells weird. Can you give me any more detail? Like butt. <laughs> Literally? Yes. All right, you tell people. I'm going to grab that XO. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> it smells like butt. Uh, people, let me. And then maybe like. Look at the camera. Oh, I know. right here. I see it. There's a dot. Um, maybe some sort of fruit, but butt fruit, butt fruit, butt fruit is great. That's a great note, man. <laughs> Have you tasted the butt fruit yet? No, I All haven't. Right, taste the butt fruit. Let me know what it's like. I could drink this. Still wouldn't be my favorite. How does it compare to the? Mellow corn. I hated the mellow corn. <laughs> you lying to me then. You I didn't you lie taste. to you. I never once said I liked it. You assumed I said oh. I liked it. Do you like that? It's closer <laughs> to me liking it. That's not an answer. Do you <laughs> like that? I'm going to have to freaking treat you like this is a deposition if you're going to play these kind of word games. You taught me well. I'm sorry. Answer the question, Ms. Alvarado. <laughs> The taste is okay. I don't like the smell. The smell is very off-putting. Mm -hmm. I thought I you might. I thought you might like that. Sorry, go, go ahead. I like that there's no like bitter woody notes at the end. That's that's why I went with light whiskey because light whiskey avoids that. Go ahead. Um, it's pretty light. A lot of whiskeys I've had before feel very heavy. Mm -hmm. um, general flavor is pretty fruity. Mm -hmm. um, but it, the smell is very off-putting. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Good, 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 good. Here you go. Is the smell or taste any different in that glass? Yeah, all I smell is fruit now. So it's positive. That's a good thing. It smells um, like pears again. Pears are actually a relatively common note in light whiskey, in my experience. Hmm. God damn it. Making a mess. <laughs> he makes this much mess as sober, too. That is true. Yeah, it smells um, like a really crisp pear. Oops. Yeah, it's a good note. The taste isn't as good in this one. Interesting. So you like, see, now that's not the first time you've said that. You said a couple of times you said you like the smell better in mm -hmm. this one yep. and the taste better mm -hmm. in this one. That's interesting. I love science. Okay. <laughs> this is not science at all. I mean, it is a little this bit. It's most, just a this very is the small. Most garbage science. <laughs> you just have a very small. Um... Yeah, my sample of one. Yeah, yes, yeah, small sample size. Yeah. So you prefer the flavor of that. Okay, yeah. cool. Here. I am going to drink this jungle juice I'm making, by the way, at the end of this, just mm -hmm. so you know. That's getting drank. I'm not going to drink it all in one shot or anything crazy, but I'm going to try it. Cool. We're learning so much, guys. Learning so much. Oh. We should have tried it in the rock slabs before you poured it out. Because any time before, I've always preferred the rock slabs. It's off-brand for me to be out of those two. No, no. We can do that. I need to stop giving him ideas. 
My wife and I can join next time you do this sampling. <laughs> I just get myself into trouble when I tell him my ideas. Like this live stream. You've had so many good ideas lately, baby. You are crushing it. Hashtag crushing it. Uh-huh. And you're how old again? I don't know. I forget. There's an awful lot of liquid in there. I mean, you're not going to shoot it. It's all right. Oh, let me stir it. I'm sorry. Nate said, my wife and I can join you the next time you do this sampling. We can do that. Okay. There you go. Maybe Oreo should be your co-host for that one. Yeah. She's so patient and good on camera. Is that your favorite? Mm hmm You actually like that one? Mm hmm Boom! Thank you! There we go. That's all I wanted. I wanted her to say she actually liked any of this stuff. It still would never be my first choice. Well, no. I mean, so the starting point for anybody's whiskey journey is finding what you like. And then I slowly build up your flavor profile and palate over the years. And some people never actually find like a real enjoyment out of whiskey. But if you find something that you like and you go back to it a couple times, you sort of like learn to really enjoy other elements of it. It's sort of like the first time you start drinking anything. You don't like that's the taste true. of it, that's but you true. get used to it. Coffee, liquor, anything that's not just like sugar, basically. Um, yeah. So that is really good information that she actually likes in the rocks glass. Half and and Nate asked what it was. That was this barrel rye. So it's a light whiskey. It's a rye whiskey. It's incredibly high proof, but I've watered it down to get it to approximately thirty five to forty percent alcohol. But otherwise, I didn't do anything else to it. So there you go. I guess we're done here. No, because you I know you have like six other experiments you want to do on me. No, that's true. But I'm very happy that we found one that you actually like. Like you actually liked, not just tolerated, you enjoyed. Okay. I will take the the half-hearted okay is fine. You gotta start somewhere. You're never gonna train me into some sort of whiskey head, you know that, right? Oh, ye of little faith. Gotta believe. Well, this is already going far more. This is going far. so much better yes. than I was expecting it to. <laughs> so much better, guys. Yeah, yeah, Nate said the half-hearted is such a win. It really is. <laughs> if you can be like, yeah, this is, this is decent. I like this. Like, that's okay, great. Great. Because you know what that tells me? That tells me she's a rye gal. Mm. You're a rye gal, huh? I no, I don't want to be called a rye gal. Uh, <laughs> that is not a fun sounding title. Rye gal. Joe said I think the eleventh bottle will be her favorite. <laughs> you make a very strong point, Joe. I will say. Um, and this won't be obviously on the live stream, but I will eventually, uh, when this is all said and done, I will make this for her again in some point when she's totally stone cold sober and see if she still feels the same way. It's a great way to experiment. And this video will live forever on the internet. So we can always go back and revisit it and find out if there was something else she said she liked play with it when she's stone cold sober, all about experimentation. That's the fun part. All right. Fan request time. Nate, our good buddy, Nate. Your rival Nate. My rival Nate. Yeah, he and I just like butt heads the whole time. Yeah, she's she's uh, jealous of how close we are, Nate. It's true. What are you doing? What's in there? I'm giving you a taste of this Bell Me Cast Strength XO oh. per the fan request from Nate. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead. I know you liked it, but in the interest of... 
tomorrow, you're going to be happy I did that. <laughs> Nate said we were basically siblings. Yeah, that's true. We have that brotherly. Oh, you and Nate. Yeah. Well, you've never had a brother, so you wouldn't know. Or a sibling, for that matter. I sure fought with my dad like he was my brother. It smelled better. You like that? No, he just said it smells like butter. Oh, it smells like butter. All I taste is wood. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. All right, let's dump it. Put it in the pile. All right, Nate. <laughs> Nate says Kyle and I are BFFs. Much love to you, Nate. Okay. So we put that one out of the way. That means we got 12. We're trying that. Oh, wait. This is the best one. I got, I'm got. i putting them in order down here for favorites. All right. Would you like this one? I don't even know. That's a sound. Oh, no. She won't. Sound. Me. Oh, no. She won't like it. And then he poured. Proceeds to pour it. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead and 86 this one right off the bat. Um, by the way, if you're curious, this was Koval. Uh, this is a 100% wheat whiskey, 55% alcohol. But it's very woody, and it's got a lot of baking spice. Um, Joe said I'm drinking too much water. Incorrect. <laughs> one of the best things about drinking water, this is a good tip for anybody who likes to drink a lot. Water doesn't make you get less drunk. Water just makes you less painful the next day. So... Alternate your drinks between alcohol and water. Not because you're not going to get more drunk. You will get just as drunk. It does not dilute your bloodstream. It just makes you not feel like Hate garbage yourself. the next day. Tomorrow. Exactly. So drink lots of whiskey, drink lots of water. Have fun, guys. That sounds like a good sign-off. That should be your sign-off from now on. <laughs> drink lots of whiskey, drink lots of water. <laughs> what am I doing with this? I don't know. Did I taste that? Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, man. All right. Now. So the whiskey we know she likes was the rye, which is a grain forward whiskey. It was a high proof whiskey and it was a light whiskey. Um, yeah, Nate, nothing says uh, you're going to feel terrible when you eat that McDonald's. Nate has first hand experience with... Uh, a lot of McDonald's after a lot of whiskey. When he came over, we probably tasted 40, 30 to five, 35 to 40 whiskeys. I think it was probably closer to 40 because I pulled some stuff out of the back. Um, and then the next day, no, it was that night at like 2 a.m. We ate a lot of McDonald's. They had two huge paper bags. They were like paper bags this big. It was a good day. Filled with McDonald's. I came down the next morning and our like entire kitchen was just covered in McDonald's trash. We actually had, we knew it was going to be cold when it got here. So I preheated the oven and then we put it all in there. It was great. Came out fresh and hot. It was the best thing ever. Okay. Now. Okay. So, the last whiskey that she actually enjoyed was a rye. It was a light whiskey. Grain forward light whiskey that I proofed down. Um, this is a light whiskey from MGP, which is usually grain forward. It's also high proof, so I'm going to proof it down. But I'm going to proof it down a different way. So, instead of using water or ice... I'm gonna use sparkling water. Now, you can use soda water. Uh, it's called a highball. It's a very, very common drink in Japan, actually, where they do whiskey with soda water. Uh, it's, again, I don't shame anybody for how they drink their whiskey. Drink it however you wanna drink it. This one is unfortunately flavored, but it's a lime flavor, which I think she will enjoy. We so have tonic water. I'm not, do we? Where is the top shelf? 
It's a little yellow and white can. I don't know who left it here, but someone left a ton of water here it's on the top shelf. I'm just way more observant than he is. Oh, this is tonic. This is quinine. I said tonic. Did I not say tonic? Okay. Well, choose whichever. Nate one. said club soda is the non alcoholic base for my old fashioned. I dig that. Yes, Nate. I know she said tonic twice. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. She ain't gonna like that. I like tonic water. <laughs> I do not have Angel's Envy. Uh, Joe, I don't have Angel's Envy Rye, unfortunately, so we cannot do that experiment. Try that. That's actually pretty good. It's got that bitter quinine at the finish, though, because it of the tonic. It smells good. But um, it smells delightful. It's a pretty solid highball, honestly. Mmm. You like that? Yeah. Say so we're learning, guys. It's still a little woody. Yeah. Um, but, this is woodier than so. This light whiskey is a lot woodier than the um, the rye you tried before mm -hmm. that you liked, in part because this is rather old. This is fourteen years in a barrel, so mm -hmm. this is light whiskey. It's not rye, but it's much much older. The um, the barrel rye is. Oh wait, maybe it's not older. Well, shit. They're both fourteen years old. Makes me look like an idiot. Okay. But look at the color difference. Well, but one's light. That one's light. That one's red. No, they're both. See, this is light whiskey. No. They're both light whiskey. This is a rye, and this is a, a bourbon. Well, Could it be the mash bill? It's a oh, light whiskey. It must be. It must be something with the mash bill or something with the aging process. Where was this aged? That one's aged in Kentucky, but it's distilled. No, no, no. This is Canadian rye. Well, but it's distilled in Kentucky. I read the back. Distilled in Canada. That's what I meant. And then aged in Kentucky. Where does it say aged in Kentucky? Oh, okay. Like second sentence? Yeah. So maybe that has something to do with it. Being Canadian rye, um, it may have less of that woodiness. Who knows? Hard to say. But you like that one. Mm -hmm. A Good. lot more than anything I've had. Hey, there you go. But I think it's because of the tonic water. Oh, I'm sure it is. But like, like I said, highballs are actually a, a very common drink. Um, All right. We're learning so much, guys. We're learning so much. And, and this is going far better than he ever expected it to. Yeah, we found two different whiskeys she likes in two different ways. Joe said his wife likes rye better too. I wonder if that's um wonder if there's if there's some sort of predisposition for rye preference based maybe, on Maybe it's because it's fruit, fruitier. Yeah, maybe, but like I always get a really grain prominence from rye whiskey. I, didn't taste I do not grain. like rye typically because it's quite grainy. It tasted like fruit to me. But rye naturally tastes kind of fruity. Uh, right. Like as a grain, not just as a whiskey. Oh no. Now we're just fucking around. We're at that point in the evening. What's the point of having the little ice scooper thing if you never use it? I don't have an answer for that question. Most of my questions you don't have answers to. Like, why, if I tell you there's a cactus somewhere, do you feel the need to touch the cactus? Every time. Every single time. Ow, it hurt me! Yeah, that's what cactuses do. Don't add the tonic water when you before you shake it. Or whatever it is that you're doing. Don't add any bubbles to the shaker. 
because I've seen you do that before. <laughs> Silence. Serena says, same reason why the plant community slaps back the dirt. <laughs> I don't think I do that. Is that a thing? Is that something you're like anyone you've known does? You okay? Our dog is gagging on the air. <laughs> What is on me? I'm covered in something. You just I'm sticky. Pushed the bottle down and it splatted at you. Do you not remember that? Ugh. That no, that no, that can't be this. I don't. I'm like. Quinine? I don't know. It's gross. You okay? This is Oreo, our 14 year old dachshund, mini dachshund. I just decided to make a uh, old fashioned because I can. I put it in this glass because I initially was going to make a Manhattan, realized I didn't want to make it. It was simple, Joe. Yep. This is just bitters, simple, and whiskey. Try that out. We try not to put Oreo's nose into too much. Where is the orange peel? Just deal with it. Good? Just got to deal with the fact that I have no garnish, no orange. He doesn't have any cherries either. I do have cherries. I just didn't put them in. It's very sweet. Mm hmm Ooh, I like that. I don't mind it. It's just very sweet. You prefer less sweet? Mm hmm Good to know. All right, great. Another experiment down. At this point, I'm just doing all of the things that I got out because we somehow amazingly got the result I was looking for without mixing anything. Oh, there you go, Joe. Wait, that was Nate. Nate said, add a little club soda. We'll float a little. Well, we don't have any club soda, so we're using tonic water. Well, but... we'll float where, yeah. We'll float a little tonic on top there. Give that a try. It kind of looks like champagne. It does. Not. Oops. This is delicious. Hey, there you go. This is going better than I could possibly have hoped for. Yeah, he's never actually tried this before. Yeah. We've been together for two years and he's never tried. Gotta save it for the good content, I guess. Yeah, you have to save it to be a YouTuber. All oh, right. No. There's more bottles. How many bottles have we gone through? I don't think that's important. Is anyone in the chat keeping track? I don't think that's important. Oh, yeah. We'll use that glass. Does that have alcohol in it? Yep. Oh, boy. I mean, it was mostly tonic water, but... It had the second light whiskey. I don't know the names of anything. It's called Cat's Eye Obtanium Light Whiskey. Why? That's such a weird, it like Cat's Eye's the distillery? Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> I want to know the history behind Dee that. Dee Brown, has she tried a neat pour tonight? Yeah, she's had several. Um, Matter of fact, most of what I poured have been neat pours. Um, they didn't go well. The things I've been, well, actually, I mean, the things that I've been giving you with water in them, before I did the soda water, the things I gave you with just water in them, you liked a couple of those okay. And it was basically, I was just watering them down because they were 65 to 75% alcohol. They were incredibly high proof. And so I was trying to give you something more in the 35 to 40 range. So there have definitely been some neat pours tonight. Mm, they didn't have, they had ice in them. Anything that I've liked had ice in them. Um, I thought one of them I watered down and that you liked okay. I don't remember. We'll have to watch this tomorrow. I have to check the tape. Go ahead and try that. Just try it neat. <sighs> Miss D. Brown wants a neat pour. We can give it to him. 
Yeah, I know you're going to be drunk at the end of this. Uh, well, all I smell is wood. So we're not off to a great start. Actually, what is that? It's rather high proof. It smells like, like something you would seal an envelope with. It's a great note. Envelope glue. <laughs> and kind of waxy. Yeah. <laughs> Smells like an old time post office. <laughs> Frontier post office. Eh. I mean, there's nothing exciting about it. Yeah. Well, no. I haven't given you anything exciting. The exciting stuff you're going to hate. <laughs> Didn't you have some caramel bomb one? Yeah. Anything age less that may not show up with as much wood, like a Buffalo Trace store pick? Nate, you know I've given her 10 pours already, right, bro? Um... Yeah, there's nothing. Did you fit? Okay. No, there's nothing in that that stands out to me. It just tastes waxy. Try that. Is your theory now just anything with quinine tonic water in it? Oh, <laughs> like. Why not? Nate's here for drunk Yolanda, so. Has Nate ever seen drunk Yolanda? No. He's met you twice. Both times you were either sober or very close to it. Yeah, I still don't like it. It tastes like wax. Give me back this. And that's good. Yeah, it is. I never would have guessed a light rye would make a good uh, old fashioned, but it did. Sorry. Whoops. Well, you're out of experiments, aren't you? Well, well. Let me grab something real quick. Oh, no. Can you entertain the people? I don't know. I can't read the chat, so probably not. We well, don't have to read the chat. Uh, what is entertaining to you guys? I don't watch his videos. I'm going to be honest. I watch the live stream like once in a blue moon. Um, I make his thumbnails, so I know what each video is, but... Most of them I don't watch, and most of them I'm not around for him to film. Not a Buffalo Trace store pick, Nate. She doesn't like baking spice or vanilla. It's not going to happen. This is the Caramel Bomb. This is Old 55. This is a single barrel pick. Oh, this, that's your pick. Yeah, spoiler alert. This week, I am going to issue a video where I review this pick. This is the store pick that I went on. I went to Old 55 with Indiana Bourbon on Instagram. And we picked a barrel unanimously. Everyone that was there liked the same barrel. And we, you know, went in together on it. I shouldn't say we. I bought a couple of bottles. They went in half and half on the rest. So uh, in the future, though, I intend to um, get myself some bigger investments in picks. But I sold a couple of these to friends, uh, patrons, too. Uh, actually, it was all patrons. Um, but... This is a caramel bomb. It's a four-year, three-month uh, Indiana whiskey. It's grown in Indiana, distilled in Indiana, and aged in Indiana. And the mash bill is kind of interesting. It's 80% corn and 20% red winter wheat. So Red winter wheat. That's almost as hard to say as bloody butcher corn. Yeah. And better, too. Hey, that vodka is good. Oh, yeah. Bloody Butcher Corn and Whiskey is not my favorite, though. Does that exist in mm -hmm. whiskey? Mm -hmm. One company in particular decided to start making Bloody Butcher Corn. Um, Bloody Butcher Corn Whiskey, and it's not good. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, this is bottled at cast strength, which is 55.4%. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. You don't, you're not going to use an ice cube? 
You're going to go quinine. What is that song? There's that one song that's like, oh, man. Your price is way too high. You need to cut it. I have no idea. Your music knowledge is cut it. far more extensive um, than my own. Cut it. Yeah. But yeah. I also know a lot more. Plans. Your price is way too high. You need to cut it. Whatever that song is. Somebody look that up for me. We're going with one ice cube, 50% whiskey, 50% tonic water with quinine. Let me stir it. It's right there. You knocked it over. How does he do these weekly without me? Is it a shit show? I feel like it's a shit show. You understand why people watch this now. I'm going to take a nip for myself. Wait a minute. Well, if it's a caramel bomb and you just put quinine, why would you do that? Nate says it's a mess. There you go. They just need to be colder. <laughs> Joe said usually. They all know. They know what they signed up for when they joined this today. Do I want to drink this? <laughs> On his jank-ass table. Yeah, <laughs> Nate loves to make fun of my jank-ass table, in his words. Mm. In your live stream. Yeah, yeah. Or in your office. Yes. I haven't flipped the table yet. I've had about everything else bad happen, but... He has almost flipped... Thank you, Joe. OT Genesis. Yes. What? Oh, Joe, remember the Cut It song. It's uh, OT Genesis. I was getting ready to say, he has almost flipped our glass dining room table before. Just from drunkenly trying to get up. After a Christmas party. I wasn't drunkenly trying to get up. But at the end. Have you tried that yet? No. I'm stalling. Okay, don't play more than I'm just seconds. gonna give a couple seconds so you people know what I'm talking about. This is the one. Well, it's all that's all intro. Hold on now. I'll just Skip cut in the middle. Head. That's what I'm gonna do. Did you like that? It's okay. It's okay. I liked the Manhattan. Here we go. Need to cut it. Way too high. You need to cut it. This cut is it, also cut it. Cut All it, right, back to cut whiskey. It, cut it. You good? Okay. This I could also sit here and drink, and I probably will. But there's like a campfire element that I don't necessarily prefer, and. Now, this is probably colored by the amount of alcohol that I've consumed. Mm -hmm. But I would probably drink either of these willingly. Which is more than he could have hoped for. We had a lot of good results today, ladies and gentlemen. This was a very positive experience. I, uh, I've given her just about every bottle. Just about. Still a little campfire though. Every bottle. Still a little, still a little woody. Oh, okay, it's fine. Don't hurt the organ. Last but not least, the one I know she likes. But after trying all this stuff, I'm wondering if she might feel differently about it. One of the things I talk about a lot in my videos is how what you are trying before or after, if you eat something, if you drink something, it affects your current profile. So you might not like a whiskey after a meal that you like on a clean palate. So we're going to give her some of the screwball. That's going to be so sweet. It's kind of my point. I take this from you. No. All right, we'll just put it over there. Fine. Cleanse your palate. Please. You're so bossy. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah, ECAT would be chewing wood for her. I think that's true, unfortunately. This smells delightful still. Mm. Home. Yep. Well, thank you all so much for hanging around, watching us be stupid and drink whiskey. Um, <laughs> One more thing. I promised the fans. Aren't we supposed to be two hours? No. I mean, we could go for two hours if you'd like. It's your channel. 
if I were to make a channel, it would be all about plants and not about drinking at all. Should we go for two hours? Let me know in the chat if we should go for two hours. Uh oh. Yeah, smoke paprika in your in your potatoes. Too much of it's gonna really. Uh... Yeah, Nate, you know what's up. Too much smoke pap paprika in the potatoes. Katie's really gonna mess with you. Can you see that? Serena wants two hours. We're going to give him two hours. The people have spoken. Sabrina. What did I say? Serena. She's not like... The The name says Serini. Yeah, that's Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. I wanted to assume that you were a professional tennis player. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that looks so orange. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff right there. It's like rust-colored water. <laughs> I'm going to stir it. Just That's probably a good call. Also, there's some quinine in there. No, I, I drank all the quinine stuff. I did think. you? I hope so. I thought I did. I don't remember. Does anyone know? If you, if you were paying more attention than we were, tell us in the chat. Oh, Lord. There's dirt <laughs> in it. Oh, no. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. And a hundred percent. Look how cloudy it is. Why is it so cloudy? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the chat is exploding. Oh, no. Yeah, this is definitely a suicide soda, Nate. We did call it a suicide. You just run the gamut of all the drinks at the soda fountain. That's right, Joe. <laughs> just fucking quoting that back at me. If it doesn't kill you, it makes it stronger. You're you, right. You did tell me that earlier. Mm, I did. It honestly doesn't smell bad. I mean, it just smells like whiskey. Very generically like whiskey. Doesn't taste good, though. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. It smells way more woody than it oh, should. Oh, no. The aftertaste. Oh, God. <laughs> I bet quinine ended up in there. The aftertaste on that is... Oh, God. It, it smells like all wood, which is surprising because he tried to avoid ones that smelled like wood. There is dirt in there. I don't think I took... I don't think I took a big enough sip. Where did the old-fashioned go? You'll want to drink it all, Joe. It's all gone. Empty. Oh. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's freaking horrible. It's like you ate a swamp. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's bad. I'm going to take another sip, but God, my stomach literally turned over the first time. So It's like you went to Louisiana after a crocodile, or I'm sorry, an alligator. Like the first part's fine. Like the, the first part starts fine, and then like the mid palate gets really weird. And the finish and is just, it's just like it's a it's a swamp. Ugh. It's where all those carnivorous, wonderful plants live. It's a swamp. Back to my peanut butter. God. Oof. Well, do you have they voted for two hours, didn't they? So you uh, still have twenty yeah. minutes to Sa fill. Yeah, Sabrina voted for two hours. Of course, Sabrina did. Yeah, Joe, I hope it was the dirt. It was a mess. There otherwise. wasn't that much dirt in it. Woof. That was bad. My stomach has turned over three times now. Just going. Yeah. All right. Well, what are you going to drink? You have 12 bottles to pick from over there. And it's so few. I 20 know. 20 minutes to kill. Oh, yeah. There's 12 bottles on one of your shelves over there. Nate, she's going to fucking hate that, dude. She's going to hate the state pick scotch. Like, I want to give her something that she might actually have a chance in hell of liking. Maybe this is why his wife still hates whiskey. Because he hasn't listened to me at all. The amount of shaking that our video is doing is incredible. <laughs> all 
move. Yeah, we. I think I got to stop leaning on the table. It, I'm I'm really bad about that. I'll just lean on you know my baby. Act like we like each other. What I'm supposed to like you? You don't have to. I mean, but the internet thinks I like you. <laughs> don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby? Oh God, Nate. You guys want to watch me drink some Weller Foolproof? The stuff that nobody can get that I got from somebody tipped me off. A good fan. I'll tell you this. I'll just tell you a story. Somebody who I haven't had. Sorry. Can I have a little more? You can. When you finish it, I'll pour you more. Um, Glenn Levitt Caribbean Reserve. Is that a real thing? Because I've never had it, Joe. Because it sounds like you're mixing Caribbean rum with Glenn Levitt. I had a guy who, um, I know him, uh, I would call him an acquaintance. We, we haven't spent a lot of time together, but he reached out to me at like 1030 one day and said, Hey, you need to get to the big red liquors on Geist. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's like a half an hour away from me. He said, they've got the Weller foolproof store pick. They're going to have enough. You'll be able to get there in time. I'm like, what? Okay. I'm there. And I got in my car immediately, took my lunch break and drove up at 1030 in the morning to the Geist big red liquors. I was able to get there when they opened their last case of the, uh, I'm glad to hear that, Joe. I'll have to try it out. I got there when they opened their last case of the Big Red Liquors store pick of Weller Foolproof. This bottle, I paid $80 for it, which felt like too much. But as soon as I bought it, I started looking at the secondary market, and it was going for $300 or more. It's the whiskey prices are out of their out of their minds. So sort of the plant prices. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and pull that, and. Uh, See how it goes. Also, if anyone's wife happens to have like an elbow node that they just happen to need to get rid of, you know, send it to the drink pro. It'll get taken care of. What is it? An elbow? A monstera elbow node. A monstera elbow node. Okay. <laughs> this here is Weller Foolproof Monstera elbow node do you have any more rye to give her oh we've got plenty of rye to give her but she's sitting there pretty happy with the screwball so we'll we'll let her continue to drink this screwball what this is the big red liquor store pick it's barrel number 148 oh you know what let's do something fun Oh no. Let's do something fun. Everything he, every time he says something fun, it's <laughs> trouble. There was screwball in there. Would I, you like oh, to rinse it out? Oh no, 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 no. Let's measure. Let's measure. Let's be smart. Let's be smart. Let's okay. be smart. 10, 15. And I've had I don't know how many pours. I don't know that now is the time to be smart. Oh no. We're going half and half, ladies and gentlemen. This is half screwball, half incredibly high proof rye. Um, I'm going to, before you taste it, I'm going to taste it and oh, see if no. I think it needs something. <laughs> Let's be smart. That shit is sailed. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right, mate. A hundred percent. You should probably add an ice cube. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I want to see if I want to add water or an ice cube or quinine or what. Ooh, that could be good. That could be good. Let's add, let's add two ice cubes. I know I've got like tongs in there or something, but my hands are clean-ish. Clean-ish. <laughs> Clean, clean-ish. You probably have fucking COVID on your hands, no, sir. No, no, no. No COVID. I don't know. When was the last time you left the house? Did you leave the house today? You probably do. I sanitize all the time. Ooh, okay, we're going to add some tonic water. Oh, man. This is going to be terrible, you guys. No, 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 no. Nate, quinine is the chemical in tonic water that makes it meaningfully different from soda water. And the reason quinine is in soda water... Or the reason quinine is in tonic water is it was actually used as a malaria cure or preventative, actually. Gin and tonic was a very popular drink developed by the British to get people to take their quinine so they wouldn't get malaria. And they just put it in their soda water. And now we call it tonic. 
It's the tonic because it's the treatment to malaria. Back when tonics meant that. The more you know. That's terrible. Enjoy. Oh, good. Can't wait to put this in my mouth. That's what she said. Boom. We're classy as fuck over here. Why is that so sweet? What the fuck? Why is this so bad? Ugh, gross. Are we out of water? Here, there's very little left in mine. <laughs> Nate, I, I'm glad you asked because it gave me some time to fill con, you know, give me something to talk about in the meantime. We're shaking a lot well, yet again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm shaking everything. I do. I drink and I know things. That's right, Joe. Oh. Did you just, oh my lord, okay. What's that kind of night? Work's going to be a real bear for you in the morning. Yeah, well, my boss is on our honeymoon, so whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> What's her name again? I, I should have <laughs> known this. You should know this, since you wrote on the card. I wrote a long, I wrote yeah, a dissertation. Yeah, extensive like Note on the card. It starts with a B. Does that help? Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Future last name starts with a P. That's not going to help. Oh, no. It's a type of alcohol. Brandy. There you go. Brandy, I'm sorry I forgot your name. Congratulations on your marriage. Enjoy all the samples we sent you as a honeymoon present. Um... Nothing like embarrassing yourself on a live stream and forgetting the name of one of your fans and someone who just had a fun life event. So, yeah. Congratulations, Brandy. Big shout out. Andrew and Brandy Pearson. Congratulations. I'm more sober than she is, but clearly more forgetful. So, say lovey. Anywho, I need this. Why don't you drink this? Deal. I love soda water. I know you love soda water. I think you need some water. You can have that. Great. I'll rinse out my Glen Karen and keep drinking. Not drinking. Drinking. Guys, Different. you have no idea. I'm so excited to eat my leftover Chinese food out of this. I did. I'm telling you, when I end these live streams, I go and eat some food and I am pumped about it. Yeah. I'm, and then you just crash and you so, go to bed. It's the I'm best way to end the Sunday. So, so excited. Yeah. It's the best way to end the weekend. You just, you, you drink a bunch of stuff. You talk to random people on the internet. Then you eat a bunch of food and you crash hard and sleep. And normally I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. She's not usually thrilled with me on. Yeah, that's right. Nate, hence the McDonald's. Well, Joe, yeah, you said she's probably not watching. She isn't right now, but I know she likes a lot of my stuff, so she might come back and watch this later. Yeah. Big fan. I appreciate all my fans, even if I can't remember their names all the time. Thank you, Brandy. I'll this the the public shaming will definitely help me remember your name, Brandy. That is now seared into my memory banks. Let's go ahead and try this. Well, hey, hey, my boss. So just to make it even more embarrassing. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Oh fuck. Uh oh. What happened? I don't know. When you get a chance, can I have just a week? No, you gotta finish that first. I don't know if my bladder can handle that. You only got ten minutes. Swimming pools, Kendrick Lamar. That's right. What? Joe said swimming pools, Kendrick Lamar. Hmm. Oh. Hey, baby. I'm going to try not to play any more copywritten music right now, Joe, but uh, it's a good song. It fits the fits the moment. You can do under 30 seconds without it being a problem. The Weller Foolproof is very fruit forward. I get cinnamon, I get baking spice, I get a hint of vanilla, and then I get a lot, a lot of red berries and dark fruit. Me so. You're almost certainly not going to get those notes. Yeah, no. Not in the Glen Karen. It smells delightful. But most whiskey to me smells wonderful. It smells like Christmas. I just don't want it. Hey. 
Drink. Headshot. Drink. Drink. Sit down. Drink. Drink. Pass up. Nate said, Kyle, you know my palate relatively well. Will I like a 15 year knob creek? Nate, are you talking about the 100 proof 15 year knob creek limited edition releases or a 15 year store pick at 60%? Important distinction. Those are very specific numbers. Hmm. You will like it, Nate. I mean, almost certainly. I know like you're not a wood chaser, but the woodiness is really solid. It's got the sweetness. It's got a great palette. Um, I've had several 15 year store picks of Knob Creek and I haven't disliked any of them. So uh, I think you'll like it. If you don't like it, I'll probably buy it off of you, honestly, because I love those 15 year store picks. So it's worth it. It's worth a gamble. We're losing people left and right. It's great. Well, you know, it's a uh, 921 or 1021. So. Everyone's like, shit, it's a Sunday. Yeah, it is a Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, we have to work tomorrow. Remember, you shouted out to my boss. Oh, and I got to work early in the morning. Yeah, oh, no. you, you said you had to be on the clock at eight. I'm sorry for all the shaking, everyone. This is not the most stable camera lineup I've ever used. I think in the interest of saving myself, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. Two hours is just not going to happen tonight. Um, You're nine minutes. I know. Do you really want to cut it nine minutes? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining. I appreciate all of you. Keep watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to chat with now me. Now you're shaking it. If you want to chat with me at the Drink Pro on any social media platform except TikTok, it's at underscore the Drink Pro. My email address, thedrinkpro at gmail.com. Reach out to me. Let's do something. Let's, let's, you know, make something happen. If you want me to try something, I'm happy to try it. If you want me to read a review something, I'm happy to review it. If you have questions, I love answering questions. It's a fun time. Thank you all so much. You have a good night. And you keep drinking like professionals. Cheers. <laughs>